So uh, welcome. Uh, this is uh, quite a turnout. It's, uh, more people than we expected. Uh, we're very grateful that you came here to uh, uh, see us dedicate uh, this this bell, which was manufactured about 110 years ago and sat in the Pinole Hercules School, which is right behind those eucalyptus trees, right behind us that stood there from 1906 to 1968. And this bell is the only thing that remains from that school. And looking around, I can see there's a lot of people who probably went to that school and and have some good memories of that school and you'll get a chance to share some of those memories in a few minutes. Uh, I'd like to recognize some of the dignitaries who are here today. We have four members from the West Contra Costa Unified School District uh, Board of Directors, Charles Ramsey, the Chairman, Randy Enos, Tard Groves, Madeline Cronenberg, we have two city council members here from Pinal, Councilman Murray, Councilman Green. Did I miss anybody? We have several members from the Historical Society Board, uh, George Vincent, Norma Martinez Rubin, who's selling books in case anybody wants to buy a book, uh, Joanne Gennady and Mary McMains, who are hiding in the back, and our president. Marcia Calipus. <clears throat> so uh, just a little history about the rescuing of, of this bell. In, in 2008, this bell was sitting outdoors at Pinot Middle School. And it was rusted. Uh, didn't look anything at all like it does today. And we met with Dr. Harder and some other people from the school district. And we asked them at that time to just move the bell uh, because Pinot Middle School was going to be reconstructed. So they moved it to a storage locker in the back at Collins Elementary School. And there it sat for a while. And then the saga gets a bit interesting. Uh, there were there was some construction going on in the back, and this bell was moved, and no one in the school district could remember where the bell was moved to. No one at Collins School knew. No one at the administrative offices knew. Uh, the bell was, was gone, and this is a heavy bell. Uh, it took a crane to lift this bell off a flatbed truck so it could be installed here. Uh, we finally tracked down the bell. It was in the backyard of a contractor's yard outdoors, not under a tarp, in El Sobrani. Uh, we rescued the bell. The school district moved it to a storage facility in San Pablo, over by Contra Costa College. And around March of last year, we went to a school board meeting and we asked the school board to make good on its promise to refurbish the bell and install it at Collins Elementary School. And within a couple of months, the bell was moved to a shop in Richmond where it was sandblasted, power coated, painted, and sealed. And in June of last year, it was installed here by the school district. And we picked this location for a variety of reasons. Number one, it would be accessible to the public. It could be part of the Historical Society walking tour. Another reason is that uh, this is a great location. Uh, it is. I mean, this, this area here was just empty. And uh, what better place for a historical object? And probably the most important reason is that Margaret Collins, after whom this school is named, taught at the old school for many years. And when this school was built, this school's name originally was Pinole Hercules School Number 2. And then eventually it was named after Margaret Collins. So the lineage from Pinole Hercules School Number 1 
to school number two, to Margaret Collins. It all ties in beautifully. I had a very interesting conversation yesterday, uh, something that was completely unanticipated with uh, a lovely woman. S Selma, come on up. This is Selma Riskin. Selma is the daughter of Jacob Greenstein. Jacob Greenstein operated the only pharmacy in Pinole, and it was located in a brick building. It was the Downer Building, downtown Pinole, uh, around where the uh, um, community corner is now. On the top floor, Dr. Manuel Fernandez had his offices, and downstairs was the Greenstein Pharmacy. And uh, Selma went to the old school, and uh, we talked yesterday, and she has an interesting story that she'd like to share with you. So please welcome Selma. Okay. I'm Selma Greenstein Riskin. I was born in 1928 and raised, can you hear me? Oh, dear. Should I come up? Okay. Um, did you catch my name? Yeah, I hope. Just a second. I was born in 1928 and raised in Pinole. I actually was born in Richmond because Pinole didn't have a hospital then. My parents, Ann and Jack, were both pharmacists. Their store was the only pharmacy here in the 1920s. It was located on San Pablo Avenue between the gasoline station and next to the bank. Oh, you want it close. Okay, thank you. I, we lived on San Pablo's, Sam, Sam, Samuel Street. Our home was a few steps from the school that this bell was at. Um, the bell we are honoring today was my alarm clock. When I heard it ring, I jumped out of bed, dressed and ran to school. The first recess, I came home for breakfast. Although I moved with my parents in 1941, I have many fond memories of my childhood in Pinole. I'm delighted to be here to make this occasion and want to thank those who supported the effort to refurbish the bell. A grand bell that has been adorned this town. My name is George Vincent. Uh, many of you know me. Uh, this bell and I are old friends. 54 years ago I rang it. Uh, in 1960, I was custodian helper at uh, the old school in Pinole. The old school, which is called the Green School, Pinole Hercules School Number One, and sometimes the Hill School. Um, Mike Lefevre's father, Red, worked with me, or I should say I worked with him, and he took me up to the Belfry for the first time. Uh, I went to the school from kindergarten, like many of you today are here kindergarten through eighth grade. Now what happened in 1949 was there was an overcrowding of the old school in Pinole. Uh, so many people moved in after World War II that the old school in Pinole, the old school in Pinole was just so overcrowded that um, they had to build a new school. So in 1949 they passed a bond and in 1950, this school was built, and it was called the Pink School because it was painted pink, and it was called Pinole Hercules School Number no. Two. Uh, in 1966, it, in honor of Margaret Collins, who was the school superintendent of the old Pinole Hercules School District, Pinole Hercules Union School District, um, it, it was named in her honor after the Richmond Unified School District uh, took over the Pinole School District and renamed it, and Margaret Collins retired, and this school was named in her honor. But uh, <clears throat> it was hard to find this uh, bell. The only way you could get to the bell 
was there was a little utility closet inside the old school on the hill uh, for custodians to use a uh, sink. But behind that, there was a little ladder. And as you climbed that ladder, there was a catwalk. And as you walked on the catwalk, it was all dusty inside and musty, hand sawed, wooden, redwood beams. And then finally, you got out into the glorious belfry with a wonderful view of Pinole and the bay. Incredible. And so uh, Mike's dad read. He let me ring the bell for the first time. Now, at that time, too, in 1960, the bell was in pretty bad shape. The clapper inside was coming apart at that time, too. But that was my first experience with the bell, and I think it was the last time it was actually rung. So I'm going to try to ring it today. There's no clapper. The clapper was lost when it was left at Pinole Middle School. But I thought I'd give you kind of a, just a brief history of the old school on the hill and how the bell related to the old school. Uh, this is at the old school on the hill, Pinole Hercules School Number 1, was actually Pinole's third school. And <clears throat> it was built in 1905 and finished in 1906. Um, in 1904, the Pinole Hercules Union School District was formed. And Hercules was growing very fast, as was Pinole. And the old school at that time was where the post office is today, called the Plaza School. It was originally built in 1896, or 1886, pardon me, as a one room school. But as more people came into Pinole, it was expanded to a two room school. And then in 1905, it was so overcrowded they had to uh, accommodate. Um, rent a room in the community for all the kids that they had. There were only four teachers and most of the classes were first through eighth grade at that time. Uh, in May of 1905, the Pinole Hercules News said there was a crying need for a new school in Pinole. And by May 27th, the site was selected for the new Pinole Hercules Union School. It was selected between Pinole and Hercules on a hill that belonged to the Ella Horst family. And the reason it was selected there was that kids from Hercules could get easily to the school, and kids from Pinole could easily get to the school. So that's why it was built on a hill at that time. On August 17th, uh, a bond was passed in 1905, and the trustees sent out bids for the school. And this is what they said. They want the school to be one story with a basement, five classrooms, eventually there were six, um, each classroom, 21 by 32 feet, very large classrooms, modern in all respects, but the cost not to exceed $10,000 at that time for the school. Uh, in September of 1905, Hercules, the city of Hercules, had completed a plank sidewalk on Santa Fe Avenue so that their students, who were not lucky enough to ride in a jitney or a bus, those kids uh, were the manager's children that rode in the bus to school. Uh, the kids could ride, walk now on a plank sidewalk to get to the Pinole Hercules School. Um, in September of that year, 1905, the Hercules Potter Company purchased the land for the Pinole Hercules School. They had the money. In September of that year, Henry Ellahorst, whose family owned the property, uh, was grading the site for the school. In October, the brick foundation was laid of Pinole Hercules School Number 1. In January of 1906, it got its first coat of green paint, and that's why it was nicknamed the Green School. And ever since then, it was named the Green School. In 1961, it got its next coat of green paint. So it was born a green school, and it demised a green school, too. You might find it interesting that carpenters in, uh, that worked on the school made about four dollars a day at that time. <clears throat> in March of 1906, the bell was hung at the school. And school was set to open. But as you know, in April of 1906, the San Francisco earthquake took place. So the school was delayed opening until they deemed it safe, until uh, October of 1906. It's very interesting. Uh, it was demolished in 1968 because of the danger of earthquakes. At least that was the story at the time. Uh, what did it look like at the time? Well, there was a huge water tower at that time behind the school to provide water. On the north side, 
there were outhouses for the children. And they planted pepper trees over the outhouses to shade the outhouses. Now, they didn't get a sewer system until 1909 at a cost of $200 to the city of Panola at that time. So <clears throat> things have changed quite a bit. Now, originally, the school had six classrooms upstairs. And by 1917, the assembly hall was added. Uh, later on, classrooms are added to the basement area. So there were a total of about 13 classrooms altogether. Um, later on, there were also uh, rooms for, uh, in the 30s, added for boys uh, for manual training in carpentry and for girls for sewing and uh, homemaking activities also. In June of 1906, um, the Plaza School closed. That was the one where the uh, Panola Post Office is today, the Plaza School it was called. It had too many children, and so therefore there was those children and their teachers and principal came to the new Panola Hercules School number one. The uh, principal at that time was the same principal who had been at the Plaza School, Frances Ellahorse. She became principal uh, in 1906, and she served until 1940 until one of her former students, Margaret Collins, took over as principal and later became superintendent of the Pinole Hercules Union School District. The teachers that came with her that time were Elizabeth Stewart, Lizzie Stewart as she was called, uh, Ruby Fuller, and Frances Ellahorse's sister, uh, Alice Ellahorse. These were the new teachers for the first classes in the new Pinole School. Uh, at that time, a history book, a California history book, said about this school that it was one of the largest schools in Contra Costa County built on a most imposing site. So it was quite a spectacular school for its day. And it was uh, shown on many postcards of the time, too, that were sold all throughout the county. It was one, indeed one of the largest schools in the county. One thing I think is important to remember is as you look at the old school, what's left up on the hill up there, uh, today there's a retirement residence the retirement residence resembles what the old school looked like at one time. But many of the eucalyptus trees that you can still see from here, those are the descendants of trees that were planted on Arbor Day by some of the first classes in the old Pinole School in 1906, 1907, and 1908. Uh, my mother and father personally remember each of the trees that they planted, uh, even up into their 80s and 90s. They knew which tree was their tree that they'd plant on Arbor Day. So those trees that you see there today are descendants of the uh, first trees planted by some of the first students in Pinole Hercules School Number 1 or the Green School. <clears throat> I just wanted to say that uh, 1966 was the last year that a class was held at the Pinole Hercules School Number 1. The principal then was David Taylor. Uh, it was still part of the Pinole Hercules Union School District. By 1965, the reunifica reunification um, from the state was required. But at that time, there were 495 students in the seventh and eighth grades. Um, when I went to the school, it was a kindergarten through eighth grade school. But then after Collins School was built in 1950, our class came down here, and we were the first class in the fifth and sixth grades down here. And later on, the school became a school for the children uh, of 7th and 8th graders. Uh, I just want to say that uh, many of you I'm sure here today are proud alumni of the uh, old school. Can you raise your hand so we can see you? All right. Anyone in the last class, 1966? Okay. I, was, I graduated in 1954 from the 8th grade at that time. But we still have reunions. We still are very proud of the school and the teachers. Uh, we remember so many of them, Ms. Jordan, Catherine Beavers, uh, Ms. Murphy, uh, my mother, Ms. Vincent, who was formerly Ms. Scanlon. And uh, I am working on a book. I will finish it, I hope, soon of the three Pinole schools. The oldest one that's on Fitzgerald Drive used to be there. The second one, which was Plaza School, where the Post Office and uh, St. Joseph's School now are, and Pinole Hercules School number one. So I'd welcome anyone who has any memories or pictures. Um, I'm currently putting together a lot of the pictures. So it should be of interest to you to find a little bit about the history of the schools we went to. So anyway, what I'd like to do now is I'd just like to ring the bell.
and see how it sounds. <clears throat> no, I hope I don't break it like the Liberty Bell. I won't hit it too hard. Um, Thelma Riskin. The clapper used the clapper used to be a Pinole Middle. When the school was torn down in 1968, unfortunately, um, the only thing saved was the bell. And it sat in Pinole Middle School in Pinole for a long time. And the clapper deteriorated and eventually they threw it away, I'm sure. Uh, it's possible. They have, the school district has a lot more money coming from the state now, so they're flush. So we'll see. So anyway, this bell hasn't been rung in 54 years, as I recall it. So I'm just going to gently tap it. Thelma, Riskin remembers that there was always one warning bell to warn the kids, you better get up the hill fast. Now, when I was going to put on Hurricane School number one, if you were the last one up the hill, Mr. Kennerly, he was next Marine, you had to do 20 push-ups <laughs> or 10 duck walks. By the end of the year, there were so many kids duck walking and push-ups push at the school that you were glad to get out of there. But when I was going to the school, the bell wasn't rung at that time. There used to be a rope hanging down in front of the uh, doors to the entrance to the school. And some of the lucky kids that got there early were able to ring it, I understand. And you could hear it all across Pinole and Hercules. It was quite a beautiful sound. So my old friend here and I, we haven't seen each other for a long time, so let's see how it sounds. Still has a nice tone to it. <laughs> Proof once again that old things are beautiful things. So, did everybody get a postcard of the old school? Okay, very good. Uh, there's one person here uh, who I did not recognize earlier because he's hiding in the back over there. Uh, Jim Edward is the maintenance supervisor for the school district, and he's the guy who slept this thing all over the place He's the guy who took it down to get sandblasted, and he's the guy who arranged to have it installed. He kept us informed every step of the way, and when he says it's going to be installed at 9 o'clock on Friday, you show up here at 9 o'clock on Friday, and they are here, and they are installing the bell. So I wanted to recognize uh, Jim. Thank you for everything. Yes, and we have, we have video of that installation. Uh, and now I'd like to introduce our Pinole Historical Society president, Marcia Calipas, who'd like to say a few words. Welcome, everyone. We're so glad that you're here today to celebrate this bell finally finding a home. We've certainly worked a long time to get it here. And, I would, uh, and uh, to recognize all the students that are here in the audience, I wish I could have gone with you, but I didn't. But I love old schools, I love education, and I love this old bell. So thank you for helping us, and thank you for being here, and I hope that all of you will continue to support the Pinole Historical Society in some way so that we can continue to do these wonderful things and bring it to the attention of the public. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Marcia. So uh, before we conclude, I know there are a lot of people here who went to the old school. Does anybody have a remembrance of the old school that they'd like to share? No one? Come on up. <clears throat> um, my maiden name was Parkhurst. My first name was Shirley. OK. And. This was during the war years, and Hercules had an explosion, and they blew out the windows, the front windows of the school. This was on, this happened a couple of times, but unfortunately, it was always when school was not in session. So, then we heard all of the school, how bad the school, the windows were. 
So we thought for sure we're going to have the next week off. We can't got notice. We went to school that following Monday. Everything was cleaned up. The windows were all boarded up, and we never missed a day. And I, all of us were planning what we we're going to do that day and mess around. We were back to school. That was Margaret Collins in charge. <laughs> but we never, lo never missed the school day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Okay, then. Uh, we're done. But before we leave, if all the alums of Pinole Hercules School Number 1 would like to gather around the bell, we'll take a group photograph and we'll put it in our newsletter and on the Society website. So come on up and we'll take a group photo. And thank you all for showing up today. Thank you. Well, that's the end of our show. It was put on by the Pernod Historical Society, and I think they did a great job. The bell looks great. So we'll end now filming.